Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live on Wednesday, August 25th, 2021, and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast so you can read more if you want, whenever you want. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find them in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Real food you feel good about eating. Our top story this week, the number of young people with type 2 nearly doubled in the United States from 2001 to 2017. These researchers found significant increases in all types of diabetes among both sexes and across racial and ethnic groups. Type 1 diabetes remains more common among white youth. The highest rates of type 2 diabetes were seen in young people who are Black or Native American. It's interesting that these CDC and NIH researchers say they don't know the cause of the huge increase in type 2. They talk about rising obesity, but they wonder what's behind that. They also wonder if it's because of increased screenings, the environment, or something else. Big change recommended in screening for adults with type 2. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force now recommends screening for people who are overweight starting at age 35, five years earlier than recommended right now. That would include 40% of the U.S. adult population. This task force recommends screenings that insurance companies must completely cover without out-of-pocket costs to the insured under the Affordable Care Act. FDA approval for GVOC kit to treat severe hypoglycemia. Xeris Pharmaceuticals already provides GVOC glucagon as an auto-injector and a pre-filled syringe This kit is for patients who prefer to draw up their own doses of glucagon using a vial and syringe. You don't have to mix anything. It's still a ready-to-use liquid glucagon that is also shelf-stable. Could be helpful to those who prefer mini glucagon doses, which are not FDA-approved, but are sometimes used during illness and other times. Note, that is my comment. Xeris and the FDA are not talking about mini glucagon dosing at all. Growing numbers of pregnant women are developing gestational diabetes. Between 2011 and 2019, rates of gestational diabetes in the U.S. jumped 30%, according to a large nationwide study of first-time moms. The cause, just like the other study, not clear. Every age group saw an increase from 15, age 15 to 44. So it's not just moms getting older, which is happening. These researchers want to look at non-traditional risk factors like stress, And this was a huge study, 13 million moms in the U.S. In the uh, no thank you department, researchers say they've got an implanted insulin pump you would refill just by swallowing a capsule. The catch? Well, first they have to implant the pump, which is described as the size of a flip phone along the abdominal wall, interfaced with the small intestine. That refill capsule is magnetic, so the implant draws the capsule toward it. It then punches the capsule with a retractable needle and pumps the insulin into its reservoir. The needle must also punch through a thin layer of intestinal tissue to reach the capsule. These Italian developers tested it in pigs. They say it controlled blood glucose successfully for several hours. Another maybe it'll work item. Israeli startup Hagar has something called G-Wave technology that measures blood sugar levels using non-invasive radio waves. The prototype puts the tech into a ceramic bracelet, uses Bluetooth to transmit readings to a mobile app with display and alert functions. A proof-of-concept study found the company's radio frequency technology was able to continuously measure glucose levels with at least 90% accuracy, compared to the estimated 70% rate for traditional continuous glucose monitors. They claim that's because it measures glucose in real time. Hagar now plans to launch clinical trials to pursue FDA approval. More to come, but first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. I was in Target this week, and I saw the new entree bowls. So I bought the lemon chicken and the lasagna. The lemon chicken was great. It uses hearts of palm pasta instead of regular noodles, which I thought sounded kind of odd, but it really tasted good. And they just keep adding to the menu line. I haven't had the lasagna yet, by the way. I'll let you know about that when I have it. You can buy online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. I'll put a link in the Facebook comments and as always in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com. Back to the news now. And a big grant goes to Scripps Whittier Diabetes Institute 
that study the use of CGMs in hospitalized patients with type 2. This is a $3.1 million grant from the National Institutes of Health. It's to build on research going on now during the COVID-19 pandemic. CGM devices have been approved for outpatient use since 1999, but their use in the hospital setting remains limited to research efforts and the special conditions allowed during the pandemic. And congratulations to Diversity in Diabetes for their newly minted 501c3 status. This group was founded last summer and is dedicated to creating awareness and providing solutions to end health disparities and the lack of representation in the diabetes space. Their big event, People of Color Living with Diabetes Virtual Summit, kicks off September 16th. More info and how to register in the show notes. Please join me wherever you get your podcasts for our next episode. Tuesday, we're talking to the folks from Mankind, makers of Afrezza, inhalable insulin. You had a lot of questions for them. I'm looking forward to that episode. And the one out right now is with Kyle Banks, a Broadway performer diagnosed with type 1 while acting in The Lion King. And that's in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please make sure to click follow on whatever podcast player you are using. I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for joining me. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.